The Small Business Show, episode 205 for Wednesday, January 9th, 2019. And welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is BFA Small Business and that is sponsored by ExpressVPN, where at expressvpn.com slash SBS, you get three months free with your one-year subscription of this really killer service. We'll talk about the details of that in a minute here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I am. Uh, I'm good. Actually, when this airs, I too will be uh, well closer <laughs> to the West Coast. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, you'll be, be out at uh, CES, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. It's, um, I, uh, it's, uh, I, I, you know, I have such a mix. I've done that show so many times that yeah. I'm I'm envious and yet very happy that I'm not going. <laughs> so you know, it's interesting. Up until about three days ago. I was actually like the entirety of my thoughts about it were positive, which is really oh, interesting. It, that's, it's that's a cool. first for me. And yeah. I, I, um, I attribute that mostly to the fact that I've, I've learned how to do that show. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I try to tell people like that, they, you know, from the staff that go with us or especially if someone new is going, if, if Christmas is here and you haven't completely booked every moment of every day, for your CES schedule and you don't know exactly where you're going to be, you've probably done it wrong, at least from my sure. standpoint. Like you know, it. it's, yeah. it's not like a uh, it's a huge conference. It's, you know, almost 200,000 people or 150,000 people. It Vegas gets really packed. And the show floor, unlike most conventions, the show floor of this convention, from my standpoint, is worthless. It's it is not, the worst place to spend your time. It is unless the, you're just, yes. gr- you know, kind of like, wow, look at all this is cool and I, shiny. I do. You know. I and I. Yeah. There's two I sections, like actually three sections of the show floor that I reserve a, a pocket of time to do that. One is the central hall where the TVs are because yeah, it's cool. just cool to just <laughs> like, like yeah. I'm there. I might as well bask in that, right? You know, yeah. and, and just yeah. experience the the sort of uh, you know extravaganza that it is. Uh, the, there is the Apple related section, which they call the iDevices Pavilion. And that for my other businesses is is very relevant. So I can kind of walk yep. around there and that's like old home week. Right. And, yeah, and it's kind of like an old, old Mac world. Exactly. In, in a, some in that, sense. Yeah. In that yeah. sense. No, very much so. Yeah. It's yeah. it's manageable and all of that in a in a pocket. And then if I have time, my gift to myself is walking around in what they call Eureka Park, which is where mm, all the yeah, new businesses cool. are. And like everywhere else on the show floor, by and large, you're dealing with, you know, sometimes you're not even dealing with employees of the company whose booth it is. You know, you're dealing with like their PR agency or their marketing agency or whatever. Uh, And uh, but at Eureka Park, you're dealing with like the guy or the team that was up until two in the morning developing this prototype that they're showing you right now. And chances are that anything you see there, probably 95% of the stuff you see won't last the week, right? Like these products will never exist past this week of CES. Some though actually do. And I've found some little diamonds in the rough there, but just being sort of immersing myself in that infectious energy of, you know, I mean, these people, yeah. reality it's distortion cool. field doesn't even begin to describe it, you know. Well, like, I, I, th- yeah, and I think the way, yeah. it is awesome. And I and I was going to say, my one complaint about those is that you often don't see them come to market, but no. directionally, they are yes. in, heading in, a, in that, you know, like say directionally, which we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Uh, uh, you know, they're, they're in the right, headed in the right direction. Yeah, uh, for sure. For yep. sure. So that's so, awesome. So, yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm mostly uh, I'm mostly positive on it. The the only I said up until three days ago, that's because I've realized, oh, crap, I got to travel and I got to deal with all this yeah, craziness. Yeah. And, like there's so much that I'm going to need to be doing that, it you know, sort of the weight of that has started to to hit me. And it's like, OK, but that's I mean, that's fine. Yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that, you know, we've done a, a few episodes about tr- uh, trade shows and why they're why you should be attending them and you know, why they're great for connectivity. But it sounds like to me we should do a an episode on how to attend a trade show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. to get the most out of it, because I've done both ways where I've kind of just th- showed up and thought it was going to be very productive and I was going to connect and all this kind stuff and i've kind of wandered around and not connected very well and and oh yeah i felt like i wasted my time and then i've done some where it's like been life-changing you know where you met a critical 
you know, vendor or whatever. Uh, so we should, we'll do that. We'll put that on the, uh, the upcoming uh, radar. Cool. Get that, get yeah, that that's a great idea. But, yeah. T- so today, since we're, you know, we're still kind of in this new year mode, second week of the year when this airs, uh, I, I want to d- do a show about confidence. I figure it's a great way to start and uh, start out a year. And, and if you're cool with that, we can uh, yeah, let's jump do in it. and start talking about it. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm so confident I, in our ability yeah, to do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I, I came around to this because I read, I read a couple of recent articles and one of them was titled, you know, confidence is more important than competence. And I thought, wow, you know, in some way, is that true? You know, and in some ways, you know, so we got to talk about this. Uh, And, you know, one of the things in the article that that they really focused on was that people believe what they are told and they're willing to overlook things in an effort to maintain their, that belief, you know, which I thought, oh, that's kind of that cognitive dissonance thing where you, you know, you set a belief. It is really true. It's the Sammy Hagar thing, right? When Sammy gets on stage, he tells you you're the best crowd he's ever yes. seen. It's the best night of the tour. That, that <laughs> yes. You you know that this is not true. Even the first yeah. time you hear it, you know it's not true. Yes. Definitely <laughs> the third time, you're certain yeah. it's not true because you've heard it before. I and yet it. you yeah. believe it, right? You're yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. So along those lines, I would suggest that as a small business owner, telling your customers that you are the best is the first step. Becoming the best is step two. Ooh. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that because I because I think that 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 uh, the more I looked into this, I was like, you know what, this is really true, and it's almost like you're programming yourself, you're programming your employees, your team, whatever it is that hey, we're the best, we are the best, so we're going to act this way, and I think, and, and you can you know, I, I, I love anybody's feedback, but I think it's more important to start the dialogue with the the fact that we are the best. And even if you're, even if, you know, you kind of like, well, we got to, we got to do a little more to get there. You can get there, but you've got to tell people you're the best at whatever. Maybe it's, you're the best at customer service. Maybe you're the best at speed. Maybe you're the best at, you know, I hate to say price, but but value, let's say value. Okay. Uh, And so you've got to talk about what you're, what you're good at. Um, And this this one quote, I love it, is that from Francis Bacon, right, of all people, you know, praise yourself. And I put these I added this and your business daringly, uh, because some of that praise will always stick. And, you know, I I don't I don't want to talk it up and sound like, oh, this is big ego thing or whatever, but it it works. I mean, you hear people that are very successful talking about that. So I think what I'd like to do is, you know. We'll talk about how you do this, but when you communicate your expertise and you display confidence, most people, or at least you know, a, a good portion of, are going to believe you, and they will tend to confirm that impression and even defend it. Yes, uh, there was an example of a of a, a journalist who wrote this article said, "Oh, I bought a, a you know, I was sh- looking in the shop and looking in the window, and I saw these handcrafted shoes, and I asked the the I went into the sh- little shoe stop and said, why should I buy these shoes? You know, versus buying a manufactured pair or whatever.' And the the shoemaker said, because well, these are the best shoes in the world.' And the guy's like, wow, okay, I'm going to buy him. And over the next like six months, he proceeded to have to take the shoes back like three times to get them repaired. And each time he felt bad, like, oh, wow, this hand craftsman <laughs> guy, you know, I, uh, you know, it needed to be tweaked and it was this, but these are the best shoes. So you just need to do it. And he, you know, he was kind of shocked about how it changed his whole perception of it. Uh, and, and I, I think, I think it's true. We are um, so malleable, man. Yeah, like, we are. Yep. Yep. And, and we talked, we've been talking about persuasion more. Yes. And, and, and I think that's going to be a theme for 2019 uh, often is that how to persuade, you know, this, today we're talking about your customers, but, you know, we talked about your team and different things, but, you know, before, but um, uh, I, I think, you know, it really works and you're just kind of, mal- like you said, people are malleable. You're programming each other. Well, I was know, just every, gonna, I was just thinking, you know, for 2019, we need to get uh, at least one guest on who's an expert in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, right? That would oh, be, that'd be yeah. great. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's good. And, and so- Back to this confidence thing is pe- people, there's all kinds of studies uh, that show that people are often convinced not by who has the best argument or the best idea or the best product, but whoever shows the greatest confidence in that idea that are their argument or that product. 
Yeah. You know, and, and, I, I, and it's I, so I think, true. And it's it's yeah. frustrating when you're on the other side of that, right? When you yes. can see, no, no, this is actually <laughs> yeah, a better yeah. idea. Like, how do you not see this? And you've got someone that says, my idea is awesome. And everybody gravitates yeah. towards that. It's like, they man, wh- like yep. you people are sheep. But the right. reality is, so say we all, right? We're all yeah. sheep. So, well, that, that, yeah, the, the natural instincts of most people is to not offer up the first idea or the first solution because they're concerned that they're going to be judged or shot down. Right. Uh, I don't know how many meetings have we been in where people have just kind of sat quietly. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I've had that problem with employees a lot, you know, where oh, nobody yeah. wants to, nobody wants to throw something out there for fear of, of failing or being judged and that kind of thing. So I think that's one of the big reasons why when somebody stands up and throws out that idea or that solution, it's like an anchor, you know, and everybody's like, Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> you know, now we can go think and either tell them why it's not good or talk about it. But that, that person that has that confidence typically I think, uh, succeeds, yeah. You know, versus versus the other folks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I want to take a minute here and yeah, talk about it. our first sponsor, which is ExpressVPN. This is uh, you know, speaking confidently. I've used a lot of different VPNs. This is the best VPN I've ever used because it's so simple. Now, why would you what is a VPN? Why would you want one? I'm going to combine the two of those very quickly here. When you're out at you know, a coffee shop or some Wi-Fi that you don't control, you don't know who's sniffing your packets. You don't know how it's configured. You don't know what's going on. And you might want to do like your business stuff. You might want to do your business banking, anything like that. You might want to log into your, you know, customer management system. You don't necessarily, in fact, not even necessarily, you certainly don't want the wrong people getting into any of that stuff. You don't even want them to know what you're doing. This is what a VPN does. It takes all your internet traffic and puts it inside a secure tunnel. So someone sniffing that traffic cannot even see where you're getting to, let alone any of the data that's going back and forth. This is what a VPN does for you. And ExpressVPN makes this super easy and so fairly priced. Like, it's actually crazy. You can take back your your privacy using ExpressVPN. They have apps that run on your Mac, your Windows, your Android, your iPhone, your iOS devices, whatever. And they are so simple to set up. I've, Like I said, I'm a geek. I've set up a lot of these things. I've never set up something that went as smoothly and quickly as this. And it's so smart because they look for the things that are going to get in your way. Like if you've got IPv6 turned on, a lot of VPNs don't necessarily look at that. ExpressVPN does, right? They've got extensions for Chrome and Firefox. So you can just turn it on in your browser if you want, or you can turn it on system-wide. You can even tell your VPN to specifically use certain apps, but not others. It's really, really smart, super easy, and it just takes one click and you can protect yourself with ExpressVPN for less than $7 a month. I'm not the only one that says this is the best that I've used. TechRadar says it's the number one VPN service. And guess what? It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you ever use public Wi-Fi and you want to keep anyone, hackers, spies, anybody from seeing your data, ExpressVPN is the solution. And we have a deal for you, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show. Visit expressvpn.com slash SBS. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN.com slash SBS for a small business show. You get three months free with your one year subscription. It's awesome. You can protect your online activity today. Expressvpn.com slash SBS and our thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, that's killer. Especially small business owners, man, oh. where you're doing so much online, you need that protection. So yeah. you just set it up sweet. on your phone, set it up on your, you know, on your laptop or whatever, and you're good to go. And you can one account, uh, you can put it on as many devices as you want. You can have three active at any point in time based on what I've been been uh, seeing nice. here in my tests. Yeah, it's great. It's great. So Very thanks cool. to ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN.com slash SBS. Don't forget that, folks. All nice. right. Back to Very confidence. Cool. 
Yeah. So, you know, uh, it, it, okay, it sounds great. We would need to be confident and show this, you know, confidence to your customers, that kind of thing. So how do you create it or, or maybe the, at least the appearance of it, you know, uh, and, and both are <laughs> critically important. Maybe I don't, you can argue which one, but <laughs> yes. uh, one of, one of the things I, I think the best way to do it is to promote your previous success successes. And, and you may not think you have them, but I guarantee you, you do uh, no matter how small they are and, you know, in your blog or on your website or in your promotional ter- material, write about what you've succeeded with and what's your business. And maybe you need to, uh, I don't want to use the word embellish, but I'm, I'm going to, uh, in, in a good way, talk about things as if they were a bit larger in life than perhaps they occurred because, you know, everybody, everybody does this and it's marketing. So people well, know, you even to, though people are going to downplay it in their heads when they hear yeah. it too. So, so build you, it up. <laughs> you got to build it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it may have seemed small and consequential to you, but not to, you know, not to everyone else. So you got to write it the right way. And, and this is where we're going to talk about directional again. Uh, uh, and, and th- this sounds kind of weird, but I, I really believe it, it works. You need to learn to tell directional truths. And what I mean by that is the same kind of thing about a little bit larger in life. You know, you're not telling lies because uh, you know, I never suggest that, but you're going to use creative words to perhaps expand on your achievements and your business, especially when you're getting started. I think this is really yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, and I, as I always like to say it, uh, you know, I, uh, I may or may not have led someone to believe something that may or may not be true. Right. Like you can I say like a thing. And yes. and and you can be truthful, but but by crafting the message, like, for example, now th- this is actually uh, I'll cor- I'll correct myself. I'll clarify myself after I say this. But I, I just said in the sponsor f- spot that ExpressVPN is the best VPN I've ever used. That implies that I've used many different VPNs. And I actually in the yes. spot, I, in your did, case, I, you, yeah, I, I have yeah. actually used many different VPNs. But yeah. you don't have to say like that. Correct. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case if it's the best I've ever used. Oh, this is the best business podcast I've ever made. Well, yep. I've only ever made one. So, you yes. know, like, yes. you got it. but it definitely is the best business podcast that I've ever co-hosted. No question yeah, about it. That's correct. Me too. No and, question and about look, it. Look at the marketing around you. You're going to see those words easiest, best, uh, most, you know, whatever. That's you need to think like that when you're promoting your achievements. And, you know, I, and I had a few written down, you know, thousands of customers. I mean, once you get to a thousand and one. You've got thousands of customers and nobody knows if it's a thousand and one or a hundred thousand. Right. Got it. And it, it is the truth. Millions in revenue. Once you get to over a million. Doesn't you, have to right. be in one year or one yes, month or even correct. one decade. Right. Yes. yes. Multi, you're running a multi-million dollar business, right? You That's could have made correct. a million bucks over 10 years. You are still running a multi-million dollar business. You don't need to parse it down so small, you know, uh, and a big one I like, you know, because companies, people always ask, how many employees do you have? You know, well, you know, I, you got to talk in kind of vague terms. If you're trying to build, if you're trying to look bigger, you got to go, oh, we have a bunch of employees. Right. We have a ton. We have a ton. Well, what's a ton? You yeah. Know? How many is okay, that? We're lo- yeah. We're loaded. You know, and if you want to get to numbers, you know, once you get to 12, you've got dozens of employees, oh, I right? I like that. Huh. Yeah, you, yeah. So, so you got to give yourself that credit. Everybody else is doing it. Marketing companies are doing it. Learn to tell directional truths. I think it's a critically important part of your your plan to build confidence in in your business. Um, you know, I always I love the one where they I see it on the side of a van or whatever review highest rated da 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 da, and in small print it'll be like you know by the owner's mom or something funny like that, where you kind of a play on words uh, to to get you know people kind of laughing a little bit, but you know again trying to just promote and get people to talk about it. Yeah, it. yeah. Another one is talk about your existing customers. Uh, everybody likes to hear you know, big names. If you did a business, you know, some business with a, even if it's a subsidiary of a large company, you could say, well, you know, we, we did some work for General Motors or whoever it is, you know, for Apple or whoever, yeah. I, you know, and think it doesn't about, have to be recent. It, yes. you know, it could yeah, be yeah, a yeah. decade ago. doesn't matter. You got it. You know, yeah. And yeah. got to promote them. Yep. got to promote them. And, and the same with, you know, big deals you did. If you did, uh, you know, outfitted, uh, you know, 
I don't whatever the numbers you you want to use hundreds of computers if you're in a tech business or you consulted with you know uh, uh, x number of employees for a company whatever whatever it is think about those directional truths and promote it if you did if your vendors like I use this all the time this has opened more doors for me is I make the first thing I usually say when I get a good connection with a new supplier I want to open the doors with to buy from uh has always been who I'm doing business with already. Uh, you know, I'm doing business with company X. And if it's, you know, when I was into buying tons of hardware, especially in the Apple space, I'd be like, oh, well, we buy from Best Buy. We buy from Apple. We do this. We do that. That that helps, you know, open the conversation with a large company that doesn't know who you are. Right. Yeah. They very, know, very they know that you know how to do this. I, in our business, it's yeah. it's it's the ad agencies, right? They they want to hear they they want to compete with their their fellow ad agencies, but they also don't want to hear that you're the first, right? Or they're yeah, the first, that's right? Because they want to yep. know that oh, you know how this that you know how the system works. Great, yeah. And that's really what you're communicating is I know how the system works. You don't yep. have to train me. We're good, you know. And that's that's yep. helps build confidence for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and in in my you know business. Uh, you know, history again, where I'm always, always looking for deals and we were, uh, we're opportunistic buyers, you know, we were always looking for new, new deals, new companies to buy from that, that had problems that we could solve. And we were buying, you know, reused, damaged, defective products, you know, stuff. Well, I, how I got in the door at Best Buy was, well, we started buying from Best Buy in the open market, like on eBay or, you know, whatever you could do. And I made a phone call and said, hey, we're, we're already buying from you guys. Uh, who else do I talk to so I can buy more? And it was the truth. But I didn't call and say, hey, guys, we're a small company and we buy from you on eBay. Right. Or whatever. You just leave that out. You know, you don't need to tell them all those details. You say, look, I'm already buying from you. I spent, you know, I, I bought 100 grand worth of product or whatever it is, thousands of dollars worth of products from yeah. you uh, already. I'd like to buy more. And it opened the door to a direct relationship. Now, it took me about three months, but eventually you get connected to somebody who says, oh, wow, I have tons of this product I'd love to sell to you. You know, and uh, there's that word again, tons. tons and so yeah. uh, it's one of my favorites because it's so vague yet it sounds so powerful. Um, and, and so, you know, use those little lean on those little uh, those little tricks to, to open doors for you. I like it. Uh, yeah. One of the things that, that may sound counter uh, counterintuitive, but we, we talk about on the show here a lot is talk about your state, your mistakes and more importantly, how you overcame them, because that's the powerful lesson. Not that you made the mistake, but that you took some action and you rose up and solved that problem. You know, we just did a show about debt um, last week and how overcoming that can be really powerful. So using that trick of saying like, you know, uh, oh yeah, I made this big mistake or we, we really screwed up here, but then this is how we fixed it. Here's people admire we've done to fix it. Yeah. 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 People admire, people admire that. And all along the way here, I'm talking about, you know, building confidence with customers, vendors, suppliers. But at the same time, these same tricks are building confidence in yourself, for yourself. Because the more you talk like this, the more you're programming your, own, your, your brain. You know, you're creating the reality. And the more you hear this story, like we talked about here, you get to create your own story with your, your small business, the more confident you're going to be. And then you're just going to build on that. It's true. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so one of, one of the things I have is if you haven't achieved a ton of things, uh, talk about the goals you're working your way towards. You know, we recently had uh, the founder of sellyourmac.com uh, on the show and, you know, he talked about some really big numbers and I was like, wow, that's impressive. You know, he wanted to be 50 million or something like that, you know, and he had a long way to go, but he's, he's he, you know, they've achieved a lot already. I think he was a 5 million in yeah. revenue or something. Yeah, That's an impressive number to throw out. And, and am I going to like follow up with that? No, I'm saying, wow, man, this guy's striving to doing 50 million in, in revenue here over the next, whatever, five years or something yep. like that. That's impressive. That makes me feel confident about this guy's business that he's yeah. got this goal. goal that he's got work. this goal. And it's just yeah. a thing he said. I mean, you, yes. we, I yes. assume that he like he's ready to back that up, but yeah, only that, because of what he said. Well, that's the first step, right? <laughs> I'm going to do 50 million in revenue. Yep. If you never talk about it, you you're won't do probably it. No. you won't you won't do it. No. Um, 
And then another one a thing that I actually added to this list this morning that's not in your notes, Dave, is you know, 2019, and I've already started like putting my numbers, and you know, I've got yeah. four or five different companies that I've got to settle out for the year, and uh, you know, a big part of confidence is knowing your numbers for your business or your businesses. And, and I added this, even if they suck, <laughs> you're, you need to know them and know where your, your revenue is and where your expenses are. And, you know, I have one new business, you know, that I'm working on yep. and, you know, man, it's just a money pit right now. And I, I, I have this, uh, because I, I feel like so, I'm such a positive person. And I'm always looking for the upside. One of the things, how that hurts me is that I don't like to look at bad news and, but, and I feel kind of some anxiety on this, excuse me, on this project here, this, you know, this last few weeks and, and not until I really sat down this morning and got all the numbers updated and was like, oh, you know, it's really not that bad. You know, we're, we're, and, and look at all this other good stuff we have. So I would say that even if the numbers are not what you want them to be, the more you know them, the more confident and you're going to be, cause you can be able to make decisions that are going to help you solve those problems. Or maybe it's not as bad as you thought, which is yeah. the case for me today. And I feel, you know, I'm like. That's well, great. We're not. Yeah, you know. I remember years ago you said something to me that 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 communicated. I, I don't, we weren't. We were just having. It was tangential to the conversation we were having. But you essentially told me, "Oh yeah, you know, I look at the bank balance every day," and yep. I thought, "Man, like yeah, what a good idea!" Like that really hit me. And this was probably almost twenty it years works. ago. You know, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it was a long time yep. ago. But it was like, yeah, you got to do that. And I've I've noticed. When, you know, when things aren't going well, like you, I don't want to see bad news. So yeah. I will not look. And it's like, I'll, I'll catch myself saying, oh, I don't have to look today. It's <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah. no, no, no. You need yeah. to see that. If only just to motivate you. But also, like you said, you got to know your numbers, even if they suck. You got to yeah. know them. Yeah. Well, you yeah. may be in, in, it may be a crisis and you may not know about it. <laughs> yeah. And, and let me do like we talked about last week, crisis is a tremendous motivator. <laughs> That's the thing is like you, if you know you're in crisis, man, yeah. you know, just imagine how much better things are going to get once you know, yeah. and once you accept it, you know, it's like, okay, yep. here we are. Great. Now I know how to solve. Like I, I was thinking about this after we did last week's show, because the same thing, like I, <sighs> I like to solve problems, right? But sure. w with running a business, the hardest part is when you don't know what to do next. Yeah, yeah, right? for sure. And so yeah. crisis in that sense is actually very easy because you know what the answer has to look like, right? You don't. You might not yeah. know how to get there, but at least you've got like, okay, cool. We have to get there. How are we going to do it? Well, by any way we can, you know, yeah, and you figure sure. it out. But you figure it out. Yeah. You know, when you're not in crisis, you still have to put that goal out there or that next step and whatever it is, because you've got to have something that you're that you're working at. You know, otherwise you're, it's not working and that can be your system or whatever. But you've got to have it there so that you know yeah. what to do next. That's the hardest thing. I remember I had For a partner sure. that who is no longer my partner. Uh, and I knew this day that this person would no longer be my partner very soon was uh, it, it, we were having a conversation and uh, this person was in charge of the business. I was a junior partner and uh, and and, you know, I was saying, well, you know, you, you got to do this stuff. And this person said to me, well, no one told me what to do. Oh, that's a, uh -oh. That, that's a death knell. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> gotta go. Yeah. Pull the ripcord. Yeah. Pull the ripcord. Yeah. Like, that's of tough. course, no one told you what to do. Welcome right. to the big leagues, you know, or yeah. or the small leagues, or whatever sure, league sure. it is. Yeah, yep. like you, yep. you have to. That's up to you as the business that's owner. Up to you. Yeah, that's correct. And yeah, crisis sure. is the easy way to know what to yeah. do. In, in yeah. many senses. Yeah. And I, and I have to give credit uh, that, you know, checking the bank every day. I learned that I had a business partner who was, he was an accountant. He was a CPA oh. and he was a terrible part. I mean, him and I didn't get along. He was a good guy, but we had different uh, goals or uh, we had, we were headed in a different direction. So our sure. partnership didn't partnership only lasted for about four years, but he taught me that he's in, he was the one who said that, Oh, I, we, I checked the bank every day. Uh, and at the time it was to check to see how, how overdrawn our business was right <laughs> unfortunately but 
it stuck with me that, wow, that, that is a really powerful way. And, you know, whether you're using, you know, PayPal or your balance on, on different, uh, marketplaces, which is what I check a lot now, um, and the bank, it, it, it motivates you yeah, in wherever it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever it is, look around and just check cash because yeah. you, it's often hard to put your finger on profitability, right? It, it, quickly. You know, you can run your P&L, but for me, I'm always frustrated because I'm waiting for data. I'm waiting for reports. I'm waiting for the bookkeeper to enter stuff. I'm waiting for stuff to come in. So I have our time. I was like, well, I got I to gotta wait, you know, a week or two weeks, but yeah. I can always put my finger on how much cash I have. And that it, I think is, is, is it more important. And it's either a confidence builder or it's a crisis <laughs> indicator that allows you to act. Right. Yep. So it, it's good. So, you know, confidence, it's critically important, you know, and I would say showing that confidence is, is, you know, extremely important for your small business. Uh, ultimately, you, y- your actions and your small business actions are going to build the most confidence for yourself and for your customers and for your suppliers. You know, all three are really very important uh, and, they, and they kind of shift around. But, um, and, and I'd love to hear your stories. If you've got some stories of how you, you know, build confidence and uh, trust is also the you know, same thing if, for your employees, you know, contact us at feedback at businessshow.co or come talk to us in the small business support group at businessshow.co slash Facebook. And I hear the music. Oh, the music <laughs> is awesome. here. Why not? Yeah, sure. Awesome. That's how yeah. it goes. Thank you yeah. for listening, everybody. I hope yeah. you're having a great start to so your new much. year and we really appreciate having you here. Yeah. Keep living that charmed life, folks. That's uh, that's it. if you can't think of a goal start there and work from that so there you go take it easy folks see you next week